Okay, so this has been a long time on this project, uh, a bit longer than I anticipated. I uh, wanted to get rid of these old, nasty, lead-acid batteries. Got uh, eight of these suckers. Uh, makes up a 740 amp hour battery bank. Of course, lead-acid means you can only really use half of that. So, uh, I want to get these things out of here and replace them with some lithium iron uh, phosphate batteries and, uh, you know, pull them out and uh, the, here they are all out on the floor. And they're about 80 pounds a piece, so pulling them out wasn't, uh, was a bit of a task. So once I got the batteries out and uh, cut out the nasty rubber liner in there, the, the cement floor is actually not too bad under there. And I don't know who D and D are, but apparently they were here in 94. Uh, so the batteries that are going to go in here are these uh, EG4 um, lithiums that uh, I got. I've actually got three. These are two that are charging up here right now because uh, you want to get them all to the same level. So I'm going to get them all charged all the way up before they go in. So here they are charging up. Uh, getting ready to join the other one and uh, become part of the uh, new battery bank. So I had to make these bus bars. Uh, they uh, are going to mount on the uh, 3D printed brackets here and those are going to mount it to the uh, side of the rack rails. So you can see I printed them up with my uh, 3D printer and I took about 11 hours each uh, and they came out alright. Um, you know not bad for 3D print and they're pretty strong, stronger than I expected. And the idea is that the bus bar will screw to those and the holes in, in the bracket are spaced so that they'll line up with the uh, rack rails um, and uh, it can screw to the side of the rack rails so that I can mount those bus bars on the side of the rails and have them held off the side with a nice uh, non-conductive uh, 3D bracket. Unfortunately, the screws that I have for this project, the heads are too big. So uh, instead of driving to town, uh, two hours round trip, I decided to make this little appliance uh, on the lathe and uh, use the lathe to uh, make a center hole in it and uh, thread that for the same size as the thread of those screws. And then the, the screws just thread into that and it chucks into the lathe and uh, took a lot less time to do this and modify the screws than to drive to town and back and it was a lot more fun to do this on the lathe than to drive to town and back. So once I was done on the lathe with the screws, I had to do this eight times uh, for all the screws for that 3D printed bracket. I ended up with uh, eight of these screws, a slightly smaller head, so that now will work in the 3D printed bracket. Uh, then I just had to drill a bunch of holes in the aluminum stock to a uh, uh, pre-prescribed pattern to fit those uh, 3D printed brackets, and then the holes had to be tapped. There's actually two different size holes, uh, six holes, uh, three in each of uh, the same size, for the uh, battery leads and then one hole is a little bit larger and tapped for the uh, the power leads that go into the e-panel. So now we've got a new uh, battery compartment, uh, well same battery compartment but neater with uh, much better batteries now. So there they are, uh, the new uh, lithium irons and uh, they're all connected to the new bus bar and in service now and uh, we've cycled them a couple of times here so they're working well and you can see the new bus bars there and uh, sides the positive so I got a little bit of a rubber thing over them but uh, I got my nice uh, homemade bus bars in there and uh, the uh, power lead, the positive side there, you can see I'm supporting that with a little bit of uh, strain relief. And they're uh, connected together. There's some question as to whether or not it makes any difference to connect these things together when you're not connected to a grow watt inverter, but um, 
the gentleman I spoke to at the manufacturer seemed to think that it would be of benefit, so I connected them up. Uh, I also did check with them about the orientation of the batteries, and they said that the uh, batteries in this orientation are fine, uh, as long as I'm aware that the uh, vent holes on those cells are on the top. So if any of those battery cells did have a problem, you know, the cell would vent on the top. So there's a potential issue there. But uh, other than that, manufacturer said it was completely fine to mount them this way. Um, you can see right there, uh, I'm at 80% uh, and discharging, and um, so far so good. We're uh, we're we're gonna see how they go for the next uh, couple of weeks, and maybe I'll do a follow-up video and let you know how they're doing. But uh, that's the install. Uh, you can see I also I didn't uh, include video of it, but I also have those little white covers I 3D printed for the RJ45 jacks uh, in the front there for the ones that weren't in use since it will be facing up I figured uh, a little extra protection there so you don't have uh, anything falling into those ports.